Hi everyone, I've come down to Peterborough Milton Golf Club to share some awesome tips for beginner golfers. The type of things you don't get told when you're taking up golf. These are really valuable if you are new to the sport, but I reckon there are one or two in here as well that even the most experienced golfer will learn from as well. First up, we all get nervous on the golf course, beginners especially. You think everyone is going to judge what you're doing. You play with a better golfer than you. You get nervous, you worry about what you're going to do. Stop that right now. As golfers, we're so insular, we're so focused on what we're doing ourselves, worrying about hitting a good shot, not messing up, playing to our potential. And that goes for whether you're a pro, a single digit handicapper, mid handicapper, high handicapper, or you're right at the start of your golfing journey. Don't worry about it. We're all there to have fun, have a good time. The more you stress, the more you're gonna hit poor shots. So relax because no one else really cares what you're doing nearly as much as you are. Hit your shots and have a good time. It's important to remember there's no such thing as an easy shot in golf. They're all worth exactly the same, whether it's tapping in a two footer or chipping back out of trouble into a wide fairway. Treat all of them with the same focus and concentration because you don't want to mess up what you think is an easy shot. So focus, make sure you get the ball back in play and really limit the damage. Next up, always stay for the prize giving if you've taken part in a competition, even if you're definitely not in and amongst the prizes. It's polite, it's a great social thing to do. You really get involved with the club or the competition wherever you are, and it helps you make more friends. Golf, after all, is a social sport, so the more you engage with the social side of it, the more fun you will have. Fitness isn't something you always associate with golf, and if you're coming to it from another sport, something more physical like football, rugby, cricket, hockey, you might think, wow, I'm a fit person, I'll have no problem. But golf fitness is different. You're out there for four or five hours. It's not as intense, but it does require a lot of concentration, and you can walk five or six miles easily during a round. Even if you are used to playing those more high-intensity sports, don't be surprised if when you start playing golf, you find yourself getting a bit tired towards the end of 18 holes, not just mentally, but physically as well. Both of those can affect your scores. Don't worry about it. The more you play 18 holes, the more you will get golf fit, and hopefully the more your scores will improve with it. You don't always need a full set of 14 clubs either. Quite often, we've got one or two we don't use that much, so leave them out. Go out with 11 or 12 or even really thin the herd i'm down to what one two three four five six seven clubs here so a half set half of my irons got rid of the driver got rid of all of the extra wedges it really helps your creativity you're trying to do different shots with different things that you wouldn't normally and also it's a bit lighter to carry you can whiz round a bit quicker and it's not going to hurt your back as much so next time you're playing just a friendly round nip out there with a half set I'm playing Stableford. Unfortunately, I've had too many shots. I can't score on the hole, so I'm just gonna go and pick my ball up. Wherever you are, when you run out of shots and you can't score on the hole, pick it up, watch your playing partners, carry on to the next hole, saves time for everyone involved. The next tip is to mark your ball and tell your playing partners what model and make you're playing on the first tee. So it helps you identify the ball. In the rules, you have to have your own mark if you're playing in competitions. And say a couple of people are playing the same model of ball, you both hit it in the same area over in the trees. It's so you know which ball is which when you go and hopefully find them. So I like to do just a couple of little dots just next to the number. Do it in whatever color you want. Get yourself a Sharpie pen, really helpful. So mark your ball, have your own little sign that you know is yours, and make sure you tell your playing partners the make, model, and the mark you're using on the first tee.
This next tip is a really good one for keeping other people around you on the course happy as well. So it's have a bit of an awareness of what's going on. And if you are playing a bit slowly, or if there's just simply a group behind you with fewer golfers who are playing quicker, let them through. That's absolutely fine. It's no bad judgment on you. Sometimes you just spend a bit of time looking for a ball. You might be in a four ball, they might be a two ball or a one ball, but it's really good etiquette. If you are holding up a group behind, they're having to wait on more than the odd shot. Just let them play through. They can enjoy their game. You can enjoy yours and no one's getting stressed with one another. Play at your own pace as long as you keep up to a decent speed that's expected and everyone can enjoy their day out on the golf course. So when you get into golf, you're gonna to want to improve. That's absolutely understandable. There are a couple of directions you can go in. So there's lots of great clubs out there that can help you play better golf. And undoubtedly they will do that, but they can be expensive as well. Custom fitting's a big thing. And until you've got a certain level in the game, there's not as big a point as when you get a bit better. So the thing you want to spend your money on and you'll get the most value from if you want to improve as a beginner golfer is lessons. Go to your local PGA Pro, get a set of six lessons as well. You can really work with them, build up a relationship with your pro. It's not hugely expensive and it is a great way to improve. They'll get all the fundamentals correct in your game and that gives you a base to go from. So as soon as you start playing, it's never too early to get lessons. Meet your pro, get a plan in place and have fun improving. And the other thing, if he does give you stuff to work on, make sure you practice, that is absolutely vital. It's what you do away from the lesson as well as when you go there that is just as important. So if you're looking to improve as a beginner, the best way you can spend your money and the most value is to be had from getting a lesson from your local PGA Pro. This tip's one of my favorites, and I think it's something that actually a lot of players who are really experienced golfers can learn from as well. And it's play with as many different people as you can. Now, you can get into a habit, tee it up with the same guys every week. If you're new to the sport, you might have taken it up with a couple of mates and you wanna play with them all the time. They're the same standard, you're comfortable with them. But you will gain so much from going and playing with other people. Not just differing standards, so you can see how better players navigate their way around the golf course, but also you get to meet so many different people, personalities from diverse backgrounds with totally different experiences of the world. That's the great thing about golf. Everyone can play it together. So engage in your club, go to a roll up if they do it, chuck your ball down, see who comes out and you get to play with. Really engage in your club, in your community, and you will gain so much, not just on the golf course, but off it as well, from playing with as many different people as you can. Next up, these little guys here, your golf balls, they're really important. You hit them with every shot, it sounds obvious. And there are loads of different types that you can get on the market. One of my big tips to beginners would be don't spend loads and loads of money on golf balls. You can go out and get some brilliant balls for 50, 55 pounds a dozen, but also you can get some really good balls from similar manufacturers or rival manufacturers, depending on where you want to go, for 20, 25 pounds a dozen. Quite frankly, if you're a beginner, you are probably going to lose more balls than a better player. And that can get really expensive if you're going three or four pounds a pop per ball. And also, you might not appreciate the differences as much. There definitely are performance benefits to more expensive balls. But if you're a beginner golfer, are you going to gain that much from them? I would say probably not. So when you're a beginner, and especially in autumn and winter, when you don't need as much feel and touch around the greens anyway, go down a price bracket or two in the balls. It won't hurt your pocket as much when you lose them. And maybe you won't be quite as nervous stood over a few shots knowing that. This next tip is actually a really important one and it's play from the appropriate tees. So traditionally at a golf club, you've got white, yellow and red a bit further forward. Historically, whites were your competition, yellow were your sort of men's practice, leisure rounds and red were your ladies. But that's been changed. Doesn't matter what gender you are or what standard really, how far you hit the ball is more important. You don't want to be giving yourself four, 500 yard holes if you're only hitting it 200 off the tee, which is a beginner, you might well be. So play the appropriate tee. So yellow, okay, it's a bit shorter, but actually these days 
you can get yourself up to the reds. If you are really a beginner, you're only hitting it between 180 and 220, I would say, with driver. Don't be afraid to go up and play off the reds. You'll have a bit more fun. There's not the pressure on you to hit the ball absolutely miles, and it will get you into it and get you scoring well. Of course, golf should be played over 18 holes. That is the full round of golf, and, and the majority, the vast majority of competitions are done so. But nine holes is a great thing to do as well. Don't be afraid to just nip out for nine holes. Even fewer, maybe, if you've got an hour, hour and a half, and you want to play some golf, do it however you want. Some clubs you can nip out and do a certain little route, or the nine comes back to the clubhouse, go and do it especially in the summer. There is no better thing to do in golf, I promise you, than a twilight nine holes in the summer. Take your bags out, carry them, enjoy the sunshine as the sun goes down and those shadows lengthen. An hour and a half out there over nine holes. It's the best fun you can have on a golf course. A round of golf can take quite a while. You can easily be out there for four or five hours. And in life, you don't often go that long without eating or drinking. So make sure you take something to drink and a snack out with you. Water is obviously the best thing. Fizzy drinks, maybe not quite so good. They can be tasty, but not great for hydration necessarily. On the snack side of things, an apple, some fruit, nuts are brilliant for a bit of slow release energy as well. So bearing in mind, you're gonna be out there for a while. Keep yourself hydrated and take out a little snack as well if you do find yourself getting peckish on the golf course. This next tip is a bit of a public health warning in the loosest possible terms. I guarantee once you get into golf, you will find yourself thinking about it at the most random and inappropriate times. I can tell you for a fact our cameraman Howard goes to sleep every night thinking about his golf swing when you get out the car and see your reflection, or maybe you see it in a shop window, or you'll be checking your positions, working on your technique, or you might just be sitting there having a nice conversation with someone, and suddenly you're thinking back to your last round of golf. Oh, that was a great shot there. Oh, why did I do that on that hole? Suddenly, you've no idea what's going on in the conversation. So beginner golfers, keep your wits about you. Sometimes it's good to have a little think about your golf swing and your last round of golf but make sure you don't get yourself in trouble when you do it. And my final piece of advice, there is no feeling as good as hitting a great golf shot, whether it's canning a long putt, smashing a drive long down the middle or hitting an approach in close. Once you get the golfing bug and you start hitting a few shots like that, it will keep you coming back for more. So there you have it, some great little nuggets that no one tells you necessarily if you're a beginner golfer. Hopefully you've learned loads from this video which will help you on your transition into the sport. And even if you're an experienced golfer, you might have picked up one or two things as well. Get involved in the comments below. Tell us if you're a new golfer, what you're enjoying about it, what you're struggling with. Even if you're an experienced golfer, let us know what you learned from this video. Please follow this Golf Monthly YouTube channel. We've got loads more content coming your way, but that's all for now.